The regular meeting of the Garden City Planning Commission will come to order. The time is 6.30 p.m. Uh, first order of business is Pledge Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Chairperson May. Uh, absent and excused. Vice Chairperson Steenberg. Uh, here. Commissioner Turnbull? Here. Commissioner Hunt? Here. Commissioner Walls? Absent and excused. Commissioner Kalidas? Didn't hear anything about Diane. Commissioner Mativier? Here. Uh, first order of business is uh, approval of the agenda. I have a motion. Yes. Move to approve the agenda as written for uh, July 9th, 2020. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Hunt? Aye. Commissioner Turnbull? Aye. Commissioner Mativier? Aye. Vice Chairperson Steenberg? Aye. Uh, approval of minutes. I have a motion for approval of minutes. Motion to approve the minutes as posted. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, roll call please. Commissioner Turnbull? Aye. Commissioner Hunt? Aye. Commissioner Mativier? Aye. Vice Chair Steenberg? Aye. Okay, uh, public comments on anything that's not on the agenda. Um, do we have an agenda out by the podium? Yes, yep, there's copies okay. right on the uh, anybody want to speak on anything that's not on the agenda? No? Okay, next uh, business items. First order of business is PC number 20-004, request for a site plan approval to construct a new parking lot at 31430 Block Street. Uh, currently it's a, in the R1 designation R1 and R3, multiple family zoning. Uh, let's hear what, what you got to say about it, okay. Dan Mario. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, we're here tonight to review a proposal for a site plan for new construction of a parking lot at this address. Um, the applicants are, are proposing the installation of a, of, a, of a surface parking lot for off-street parking to provide um, uh, an additional use on site for the Odd Fellows uh, Hall. Um, the site itself uh, was previously a single family structure with two uh, accessory garages. The, the house was torn down and one of the garages was torn down. So right now there is an existing garage in the northwest corner of the site uh, and it is, the rest of it is unimproved. So they would install, they would construct a, a parking uh, lot with uh, right now is proposed 31 parking spaces and also with a bioretention pond for the stormwater um, aspect of uh, treating this, any stormwater on the site. Um, the use itself um, in the R1 districts is in R3 is permitted. Um, this, while there are different lots on the site, it's considered one zoning lot because all these properties are under common ownership. Um, so the Odd Fellows Hall, the vacant uh, properties north of Odd, the Odd Fellows Hall, and the property along Block, they're all under the same ownership. So we treat it as a zoning lot. Um, it would be nice if they they combine the lots, but once again, it's not necessary uh, at this point in time uh, because the use itself as a um, as a private park is permitted in the district uh, and so the parking the parking lot would be a, an accessory to the, the the use and so therefore it the, the parking is permitted as a as a um, non-residential use um, in terms of setbacks or we actually don't have setbacks 
for parking of uh, non-residential uses in the R1 district, uh, but we do have a screening requirement, so I'll get to that in a moment. In terms of the parking spaces and the dimensions, uh, they're all according to uh, our code and meet our, our ordinance requirements. One uh, piece of information we will need is uh, we didn't, I did not have the uh, details of the floor plan or the capacity of the Odd Fellows Hall that it would serve. Uh, serve. Um, typically, if this is a, as a place of assembly, the parking requirement is one parking space for every three people allowed in the building at maximum occupancy. And so we just need that information to determine if the number of parking spaces is permitted. However, usually how it goes is, uh, in this particular case, um, whatever the t final number of parking spaces uh, are being provided, we just multiply that by three, and that indicates the capacity that's allowed inside the Odd Fellows building. Um, but that information if, would, would be necessary to, if, if the applicant wanted to uh, service more than what, what the parking will be provided. Um, in addition, the, the proposed parking lot does not have um, any currently any barrier-free spaces provided, so they'll have to provide at least two based on the quant the fact that they're having over uh, they're having 30 um, parking spaces. So two will be have to be dedicated as barrier-free spaces, and then a loading zone be have to be located most likely between the two um, and be a sufficient size to allow for at least one of those spaces to uh, accommodate a, a van and it, it would just involve uh, a reconfigure a restriping of the proposed uh, parking lot. Uh, with regard to lighting, we do uh, normally require some type of uh, lighting, so at least to make sure that there, it's, it's lit um, at an adequate level for, from a safety perspective. However, we also want to make sure it doesn't detrimentally impact the adjacent uh, neighbors, especially given the fact these are residents. Um, th there is no proposed lighting on the site now. One possible economical solution, and it would actually um, provide a, um, a good location too, similar to the, um, the straight farmhouse location, they have a uh, overhead parking light on an existing Edison pole, or sort of DTE pole. So they could possibly uh, have that as a location. It's just an option, but the applicant should propose how they They'd want to have uh, a modest amount of light provided in the um, on site, and we would request that that be shielded and directed downward, so that way, to, once again, not impact the adjacent residents. When it comes to uh, the landscaping of the site, uh, beginning on page three, I do have a chart about the uh, number of parking uh, it's landscaping that's provided. Uh, first requirement is for uh, buffer uh, screening along the road. And actually, my chart is actually uh, doesn't have all as proposed. They actually are required to have 12 shrubs, and they have 11 actually on the parking on, on that site plan, not seven. And they're required to have four four deciduous trees, and they actually do have four deciduous trees on site. What they've done is uh, located them along Block Street, and then in order to uh, plant them appropriately and per landscape standards, the extra trees that wouldn't fit in that area, they've dispersed throughout the parking lot, and which is appropriate, and that's what we've done in the past. So that's, so that configuration is, uh, is adequate. Um, and when it comes to that screening as well, uh, one other requirement for the parking lot is they have to provide uh, a sufficient number of, amount of green space they didn't provide the calculations, but looking at the site, it definitely seems like they meet the standard. The standard would require um, about, because they have 31 proposed spaces, they'd have to require um, 310 square feet of interior parking. They do have a, a pie-shaped landscape island right in the middle of the parking lot, and that, by a guesstimate, that's about 470 square feet. So they meet the standard. We would just need their landscape architect to verify that, that, that they're meeting that requirement. So in, in the end, the parking, uh, the, those, those standards are sufficiently met. Um, the one other issue is regard to the screening. As I mentioned, um, we do have a screening requirement between parking lots and adjacent uh, residential um, property. 
the afternoon is providing uh, an evergreen screen in the form of uh, 22 arborvitae uh, along the 140 foot side lot line shared with the, the house that fronts on Block Street. And then they have 16 arborvitae along the 100 foot lot line that's shared with the, the house that fronts on Elmwood. Um, while it looks sufficient on the parking, on the uh, site plan, it comes out to about approximately a six and a half foot on center um, planting scheme. So we would just need to have their, arc, their landscape architect confirm that that would actually result in an opaque screen for those adjacent residents because while arborvitae can grow pretty, pretty uh, robustly, I'm not sure if they, they grow with sufficient width to, to provide that adequate screen. So they might need to look at providing some additional um, screening. The alternative would be to come back later and plant additional landscaping, but you know, we wanna make sure that this site um, functions harmoniously with the adjacent residences. We don't want them to uh, be complaining about headlights and that sort of thing. And I'm sure the applicant wouldn't either. So they, I, I would just suggest the applicant, landscape architect, verify that in planting them, how far apart they're going to plant these uh, screens and making sure that that's sufficient, that they'll grow wide enough to create a, a, a sufficient hedgerow uh, with landscaping. Um, beyond that, that's ma the mainly crux of the planning related comments. Uh, we do, in your packet, I do believe we, I provided a copy of the engineer's letter. He, he just mentioned that um, the applicant will have to go to Wayne County for, the, for a review of the stormwater. In the, uh, initially, the, uh, the city engineer has no problem with the bioretention aspect. One thing I note is that usually bioretention ponds uh, have other landscaping in them, in them as well, and that usually just enhances the look in the, in the, sh in the screening of the, the, the bioretention. So that'll be a, another... Uh, uh, attractive feature on the site. Um, so with that in mind, uh, in the end, the construction of a parking lot on the site, we feel is gonna add to the function of the Odd Fellows Hall and be, a, be an asset to a community asset in the city. Um, so and it will vastly increase the, the utilization of this site and how, how, how it functions and how, many, how people could use it more. Um, so we would recommend uh, granting site plan approval contingent upon um, uh, contingent upon if the planning commission feels that that the site plan approval is appropriate at this time, or if you'd like to see more of the information as re related to the um, parking standards, uh, the proposed lighting that would be in the site, and then the revisions to the landscaping. Any questions? I don't think we touched on the sidewalks. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Eric. I just want these will be completed. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Actually, it's a that's a benefit as well of the development. the The sidewalk continue begins at the uh, three one four five four block residence, right. but right now it, there's no sidewalk connecting uh, the homes westward on block to Merriman. This site would fill in that one missing gap. And then, then they would have a continuous sidewalk for the residents uh, further down on block across this property and then connecting to Merriman. So that's another benefit. Randall, Kevin, you guys got anything? No. <clears throat> um, I got a couple questions. Uh, tell me what a bioretention is versus a regular retention pond. A uh, uh, regular retention pond is either a, you either, uh, it's a retention or detention, which is mainly it's, it's uh, sloped and uh, to hold water either momentarily or for a finite amount of, for a definite, for an extended amount of time. Um, and, and then it's connected to the um, adjacent stormwater system. So eventually it's a, it's a holding pond to make sure that when there's a hundred year storm event, when we have one of our big rains, that the water doesn't go directly into the stormwater system, a normal retention or detention pond just holds it there as basically as a pool until, um, and so that it escapes the site at a normal rate so it doesn't overflow the system. A bioretention pond is not as steep and instead of having just a uh, regular, you know, uh, hydro-seeded lawn area, 
they usually put in a lot of different native plants in, uh, in order to increase the filtration of it. So rather than having the water wait to go into a pipe over uh, down, the, down the road, it hopefully filters into the ground and goes into the ground naturally. So there's no valving on that connected to the sewer? And depending on how it's designed in the engine, and and the engineers will design it the right way, and if they feel that it doesn't have the type of soils they use and then the type of plants they use doesn't, isn't going to handle a 100-year storm, then eventually they'll have a smaller outlet as a safety valve because the last thing they'd want to have during a really big rain to have this pond then suddenly overflow. Is there so, an example of that in Virginia Gardens? I think so. I think that's where we have one. Okay. That's where I was wondering. Because a lot of cat and nine tail kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. It'll... And another way uh, of bioretention pond is a little different is what they have these smaller, what they call first flush areas, is when a, when a water first gets into the pond, it goes through uh, some rocks and pea gravel and a lot of different gravel to naturally filter it so that the, um, like the oils and the radiator fluid and all that stuff gets filtered through a first flush and doesn't get flushed into the stormwater system. So that's just another different way. And it, this is something that um, various communities, and we, like you said, we've had one in one of our, in one of our developments. And Wayne County is actually starting to uh, not push, but they're definitely allowing and they definitely want to encourage um, because they, I don't know if you, it looks a little more natural. It looks a little bit more natural, and it also treats the water better. And more, most importantly for Wayne County, they, um, and I don't know if you've heard, but in Detroit, a lot of, they're starting to, uh, in other communities, they're starting to put taxes on people if they don't hold the water on their site uh, efficiently uh, because, they, they, because they need, this water gets put into the system. It gets, sometimes if the system isn't separated from their sanitary, it mixes with the sanitary. And then it gets, during major storms, then it gets dumped into Lake St. Clair or wherever the outlet is. Right. So, so then it gets dumped there and then they have to deal with trying to treat it. And they build these big tanks and all this other okay. stuff. Okay, um, a couple other things. Um, does the building currently have a C of O? I believe so. I, it's something I can double and check. But if can, it does, yeah. wouldn't the fire marshal, oh, John? Oh, there you go. I attempted to get a CFO and it said that I couldn't do it because I had a parking lot. Yep, gotcha. well, there you go. <laughs> Everything is done with the building and no people have gone through it and seen we completely redid the thing. We rewired it, we plumbed it, uh, new furnace, air conditioner, everything else. So it's all it's ready to go. And another question they asked is we're figuring occupancy at about 75. That's what I'm trying to determine if the yeah. fire marshal has already uh, done a review of the building and its square footage and ingress and egress, et cetera, et cetera. And we did, we added a handicap ramp, we stuck a handicap bathroom on the first floor. So we did everything, you know, that looked like it needed to be. It's B first class. Sir? And that is correct because with our for our parking standard, um, for 80 people, they would need um, 26 spaces. So they would do have a few extra. We're so even on that. so they're covered on that. To, so that way, more importantly, they get the capacity they want to see in the building. The parking serves it, and then also they could even lose quote unquote lose one spot by changing that into the landing area for um, handicap spark parking and they will still have their capacity of 82 people in sight. Now, with the usage of the building, the proposed capacity of 75, the parking spots, do we need a dumpster? That could be up to them if they want to have a dumpster. Um, it, wouldn't, it would need a dumpster enclosure uh, the other alternative is to have the dumpster, uh, have the uh, uh, trash enclosed in the building. Now, whether that is, meets the health code, I don't know. 
that would be something depending on the type of services they provide. For example, if, if the interior of the building is only for assembly, I believe the health code would allow the, the trash to be enclosed there because they, they, like, if they do have any type of food service, it would be a catered event, so the food wouldn't, the facility wouldn't be, have a permanent storage for food, and so therefore they wouldn't have to worry so much about the garbage. Do I believe we have that's a how definition it on paper of the usage of the building? Uh, no, actually we don't, and that's something that um, right now it's, it's a presumed to be just an assembly hall place of uh, assembly. Um, Without right having now. that on paper, how can we make a determination on um, what the potential is for refuge and storage or refuge and whether or not we're going to need a dumpster? Yeah. It's a good point, and actually a lot of our our requirements when it comes to refuse is we just rely on the health department. So maybe we need to investigate that more and, and talk about putting that into the zoning ordinance because right now it's strictly up to whether they they can um, also obtain uh, any necessary uh, approvals from the health department. So now, we kind of come into play with the CFO. Is the health department part of that equation? Usually, the, the health department what they will do is. Uh, after an applicant applies and the use is approved, they have to go through and get their um, trades approval, but then at, and at that point in time, they have to uh, submit anything with regards to um, the health department um, prior to the issuing a business license, the COO being finalized and then a business license getting, being issued. Um, and that we usually only give a flag for the health department approval when there is a, uh, a restaurant involved or any kind of food service, food prep, food okay. prep on site. So usually food prep is what triggers uh, the requirement of some type of authorization letter from the health department, because we do receive those for okay. our, for our um, Last but not least, um, we're looking to build a parking lot in an R1. Uh, parking lots are not allowed in R1. Are we going to request a zoning change to VP, vehicular parking, even though the sites are all owned by the same person mm -hmm. that where the lot's gonna be versus the building. Um, the last one we did that fell into this category was, oh, what was it, about three or four streets west of uh, Inkster and north of Ford Road for the, oh, what was it, the, Phlebotomy, phlebotomy lab. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah, that, that one was right an there. R1 mm -hmm. Because they bought the house. You had the house, bought the house behind it, and then they moved it over. No, they didn't buy the house. It was an empty lot an adjacent empty lot. to the house, and the house sold them the empty lot. Mm -hmm. So, it got a, it got a masonry wall around it, and. Did that not get changed to vehicular parking in I order to approve that? Let's see. I believe that one, I'm not sure if that one did. I can chat, I tell you one moment. Um, I can let you know that with regards to this particular use, I did classify it as a private park and then as a private park uh, permitted in the R1 district, uh, I, I uh, indicated that a parking lot would be an accessory use to the park. And so therefore that's how the, the parking lot, uh, I, was my thought process in terms of allowing that to be located in the, uh, in the district. How is that analogous to CVS and, and the parking that they want to create directly behind in what currently is a uh, VP. retention lot? Right. Um, that is, um, different because they're commercial users looking to establish parking that serves as a commercial use. And I believe the VP district, it was intended to provide that accessory parking for um, uh, commercial users, similar to how it was established uh, behind the, um, was it Knights of Columbus? Yes. Over on Ford Road, similar to that situation. And I believe similar to the phlebotomy situation, uh, 
but I'm not sure if that. So this building is zoned what? It's technically right now zoned in the R3 district. Okay. We do have other locations throughout the city and most typically along Ford Road that where we do go ahead and when there's that one extra parcel deep behind, basically when there was an alley, if there was an alley or whatever, we would, we did um, have a history of making sure those were zoned VP, those would be limited to only parking, because that's the intent of the VP district, to only allow parking, rather than rezone properties to commercial, allowing the potential for the commercial use to get back there, I presume the city wanted to make sure that only parking would extend into the residential neighborhoods and not allow for the uses. Um, so we, the Knights of Columbus is one on the opposite side behind the, um, there's those medical offices that are low with the, like the Lemon Law sign, yep. that business. Uh, the CVS was another one. Um, and then even behind and, and on the opposite block, I mean on the other side of the street of uh, right there, that parking lot where the, uh, right now it's a dance studio and the, and the Jets Pizza and the, and the Sherwin Williams. Oh, okay. That's, that's the same as well. And then, well, if you are right, behind the phlebotomy, it is, that site was changed to VP uh, behind, because it was adjacent to the commercial property. And then also behind the big boy, that so one on Harrison. If I'm understanding this correctly, are we on solid ground because it's, uh, Zoned, currently zoned as an R3 multiple family? I believe so. Is that so. where our distinction lies? That's where I drew my distinction because the, in, the use itself is allowed to operate in the, C, in the R3 uh, as, a, as, a, as a park slash place of assembly, open to the public, and a nonprofit use. I believe it's a nonprofit use or because not for profit. The um, R3, we probably have a number of examples currently with the apartments that are up and down Ford Road on the north north and south of Ford Road. I can't cite specifically, but I, I'm sure there's a number of those that fit this same category. I just want to make sure we're on solid footing that right. we're not. And another uh, way, because we anticipated the, um, the applicant's uh, desire to have the Oddfellows building more fully functioning and having events on site, that's one of the reasons why I brought to you the, ex the change in the straight farmhouse district to the historic district, right. and then allow specifically that to be a park slash other historic sites, and then the other accessory uses to the historic sites. So uh, the council did uh, uh, agree with and approve that district. So one of the things I would talk to the applicants about would be a rezoning of the, this property that fronts on Merriman and the property that fronts on Block to change that to a, a straight farm, or to a historic, historic buildings designation that would allow that. That would put it on even more solid ground. So, uh, with the proposed occupancy, two handicap spots are sufficient? Yes, because there's, you need one handicap spot for the first 25, and then a second one from 25 up to, I believe it's 75 or 50. I can give you that number, but, but, but two is sufficient for the number of, for thir 31 or 30 parking spaces. Would it be a hardship to put one or two more handicap in there? Well, the it seems like with if you're reducing, then you're you're, you're covered. I think if we found it that it was a problem, yeah. we figured the reason we have extra spots is that we anticipated it being an older group coming in, and when we tried to anticipate it putting in more of John on us, that's why when we grew this all up, we anticipated that you were going to require more parking. And then Mitch, the guy who brought us, said, well, if they need handicap, we can put them here. So we've already addressed that issue of if you require more handicap. That's just simply a structure. 
four handicap spots, we'd be up three spots. And I still believe we have adequate. We have three or four extras already. You need 26 for uh, 80. So yeah. you're. Yeah, we're still fine. You, you've got plenty of leeway yeah, there. We can, we can push and shove or massage it any way you want it. I mean, so we can draw that out for if you want four, it's not a problem. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to handicap you, but I'm thinking 75 people, uh, the potential for only two spots seems on the light side. Does it seem that way to you? I look at numbers. I mean, I listen to, if I was to take every opinion of what to do, I'd never be done. So I yeah. go by a schedule. The schedule that he gave, we went and complied to that. And then we said, we've got to put some extras in it because we have the room. And then we can vary it. You know, because some cities say, well, it's a water park, we need two, because everyone's going to come here, it's going to be a kid. Where a VFW hall or something else, we may put four or five in there, knowing that we only needed two. So whatever you want, we, we can accommodate, I believe, within reason. Sure. Uh, what do you guys think? I got one other question that you, you brought up. <coughs> John, you've got the accessory building there, the garage that's on the property. Any problem at all using that for your garbage? If you got no, ro we, we could, we rolling, could. rolling carts, I mean, I don't know what you're going to use it for, but could you throw a few rolling carts in there? Or I, I know I've been in businesses before where the dumpster had to be inside the building. You had to have the guy come by during the day to get it where it will roll out. It was a small little three, two or three yard or something like that. That would not be a problem. The uh, garage was there. We didn't we couldn't do doors on it. Couldn't do roof on it. The idea is like the the, the family that was here on uh, Maplewood that had the big Christmas display. Right. They donated that to the museum. So that's a place that we can store things like that. Gotcha. And they have you know some outdoor uh, activities during the year that we have a place to be able to put the things for the. For the activities for the outdoors, so that's it was a brick and cement block garage, well built. So that's why we felt that we could leave it there because we just wouldn't be able to continue to use it. But this, I don't anticipate that there would be huge amounts of trash, and it probably would be if there the ability to be able to put two or three carts right. in there and just use them. Okay, okay, that's if good. We, if we had a problem that there was a bunch of That's good. Um, anybody else have anything? Okay. As I see it, we need uh, some notations about lights. We need a notation about uh, sidewalk. Um, handicap parking. Uh, well, there are, yeah, and handicap. Uh, yes, sir. I'm for addressing that issue already. Uh, we're running into an issue, and I'll say right now, is the lights that we want to put in on the pole are LEDs, and we want to make sure that the LED rating is the same as the other rating. And the lights we looked at didn't comply with that, so we're dealing with a different lighting company right now, and with the code of arts, and it's not done. We didn't feel that was an issue that before we came here. But I can tell you right now, we've talked with Mario, Mitch has talked with Mario, and we don't have an issue we don't believe we have a problem with the lighting in the near future. I don't think you do either. And what I'm going to seek is to have these couple items notated on the on your uh, plans and to uh, seek for administrative re approval uh, well, so a, that we can yeah, complete this today. Yeah, we have no issue with that at all. And I do have, I mean, I got it on my computer, but I can show you the lights we're looking at that do comply. And they shouldn't be an issue because the problem is it's on that back pole. We can't go to the neighbors so that they get up in the middle of the night and the whole backyard is just like it's all got to be deflected one way. Yeah, we just soon not make it high noon no, we don't, we don't 24 that. hours a day. <laughs> Somebody like to make a motion? Kevin? Make a motion to uh, approve PC. 
20-004, request for site plan approval at uh, 31430 Block Street. Uh, with the recommendations of, or recommendation that Mario oversees the few items left here that need to be adjusted. Which would be handicapped sidewalk and lighting. What on the sidewalk? Sidewalk on the, is it the front of the building? Oh, no, it, they actually do have the sidewalk. Okay. No, the sidewalk is in there. Yeah, sidewalk's there. Side, no, sidewalk's right there. The sidewalk, okay. Mm -hmm. That's number seven. Yeah, just uh, there. we just didn't address it. Okay, in, uh, lighting, yeah, and light, handicap, lighting detail and handicap. And, uh, yes. Seek uh, administrative approval for those items. Correct. Do we have a second? Second. Randall. Roll call. Commissioner Hunt. Aye. Commissioner Matibia. Aye. Commissioner Turnbull. Aye. Commissioner Steenberg. Aye. Okay, you guys are good to go. Uh, get with Mario on those couple items. You'll have to make a notation on your drawing. Mario, I'm just going to call on you. Okay. I'm going to get those. I'm going to call on you. I'm going to call on you. Mitch and I work together. He doesn't come down. I do all the interfacing. Okay. So you'll get with Mitch and then we'll call him the time. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. You're good to go. Yeah. I was, I was going to teach you a little bit about the, the water that goes into the sewer bill. I have a three inch meter that's been on all that. The only thing it does is sprinkle the lawn. Oh boy. And it costs me about $3,000 a year for sewer. Oh, jeez. Right. Yeah. And it's, separate, yeah. it's a separate meter. That's a separate table, though, not this table, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Good luck. Have a good Thanks. night. Have a good night. <laughs> okay. Um, other business? Is a short agenda here. Mm -hmm. We're done about the same time we started. <laughs> well, we got an hour in, close to it. Uh, anybody got any anything on other business? Question? Yeah, Kevin. Just one question. Mario, you might be able to answer this. Somebody here. Up at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. I have had more questions. What are they doing? What is the piping and stuff around there? Are they still testing for uh, contaminants there? or? I'm not sure. Uh, exactly. I haven't seen the big piping lately the, I mean the main thing that was holding us all up or that up was DTE right right and so I think what that might be I have you know I'm only here like two days a week usually in the city so I don't always get to see activities I don't know if it was there some massive pipe there that they had they've or? got a four inch PVC running around the whole perimeter of it with oh right with pipe coming up out of it then there's some kind of a red pump there along with the generator I would assume or what they put in there is probably the splicing area and they're going to have a generator to feed those couple while they're while DT is changing theirs but there is some great big red pump sitting there and I've had more people call me up what is this about I'm like I've been on a lot of construction sites and I'm not sure yeah I was about to say because I do remember seeing that when I, dr I drove around it I'm like well, I don't know what that is so who knows uh, exactly I just know that they had to do a lot of prep work and I don't know what they're gonna eventually have to do well, underground. That, I think a lot of that was why the buck was being passed back and forth. Nobody wanted to attack that causeway for the power because that was power, water main, and something else was run sewer. And right. gas and, and the T one line. Right. There's there's more and, crap and buried and under it, that. Yeah, yeah. And and it's it's under the water it. and that's what that drain field is for, I think. Oh. They're, they're, I'm told the main T1 line from Ann Arbor to Detroit to Lansing runs right through that alley. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, and that was by a guy. Oh, and that was by a guy that worked for Corby, 
and Corby is one of the people that have been putting in all those lines over the last 10, 15 years. Right. So. Oh, okay. There's a lot of stuff in that. Yeah, yeah. nobody wanted a responsibility on that because there's so much. It is we're gonna, we're ten gonna make. in a five pound bag. We're right. gonna make the news when they start excavating that. <laughs> oh yeah. I, that, there's a drawing somewhere the line is gonna be off. Right, there, there's <laughs> some, they better get in there with one of the sporks from McDonald's rather than a backhoe or, oh. or anything because that's gonna be, a, they're gonna dig up a lot of I'd stuff. I'd be digging that with a teaspoon. I'll there, exactly. You. We did that. We did that out in front of Ford, right up, right out in front of Greenfield Village. Oh. There was a 14 two that was carrying, and there was a second one below it. Oh, Miss Dig came out and only picked up one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They yeah. went around the first one and blasted right through the second one. They shut down half a deer board. Wow. <laughs> And, well, you know they like. I uh, hope they don't start digging till the heat waves. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, that's right. That's a very good point. Cools off. God, like I walked out of the house, house a couple of times today. Holy, I've, the the kids bought me this weather station and it's got a pickup sensor and I put it on the front of the house by the mailbox. My house is east west. It recorded 103.2. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yesterday it recorded 102.8. Oh my God! So well, I'm only working half days right now. <laughs> and it feels like it when you go out of 75 degree air conditioning. I got it set at and walk out in the yard. It's like holy mackerel! It's like a mugging. <laughs> yeah. I pity those that uh, have to go through this with no air. I got a quick question. Um, last week when we did the video on one, and the guy was buying the millworks wanted to open that RC track outside, across the street from the sports venue at the old mill shop. What's happening with that? So that one, the, he hasn't uh, requested going to the council just yet, but it's going to have to go to council, it looks like, um, to have it, the council vote on it and your recommendation of the of denial is, is going to be the first thing they read. The applicant has just been uh, attempting to provide more and more information as to what is his site is going to be and how it's going to be. Uh, he feels is not going to be detrimental to the neighbors, uh, but you know. And where was the location of this? It's up at the Ma Maplewood Lumber. Oh, Maplewood right Lumber. At Ma yeah. Right at North. Uh, right behind Right, yeah, so he's got all his, so there's, there's a house right, right, there's a house right there and between, and there's in his empty yard. just yeah. to the south of it. That's what I thought too, the, the, I thought yeah. those are apartments, he uh, was saying that those are offices. Apartments. Yeah. yeah. I think there's about eight or ten there. Yep. Yeah. And in addition to that, he actually owns the two lots to the south of the building on Middle Belt. Right. And so he wants to put a, a track out there as well. With, that, with all that I big, think, gigantic that indoor space, why, does he, that? why does he want to go outside? I guess uh, in terms of... something that would be limited to four or five, five months, six five. months of the year. Well, he, he, I believe he wants to have that as extended options for the summer months, but then in the winter months he would be the interior. That's what his, his idea mm -hmm. is. Okay. But. But that is definitely not a C3 zone. There's no two ways about that. We said that is not a C3, no. Mm -hmm. No. So find another way, but we're not doing it that way. And I, I was, uh, the, uh, Joel, uh, Kim, Kim was concerned with it and wanted to address the applicant through the FaceTime thing that we yeah, you don't get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think not. No, this is our meeting, and you can hijack your own meeting, but you ain't hijacking this one. Okay. So I was just curious as to what that. The man was upset. He was a lifetime Garden City resident, and he had bought this in good faith, and it didn't never occur to him that that was not what it could be used for. So apparently he had been having conversations with downtown development. 
Well, it sounds like it's still up in the air and right. nothing's in stone, so we'll see where it goes. Well, you know, we got our hand slapped more or less over the bowling alley, so I just wanted, I, I, I looked at the code, and that is not AC3, no matter how you slice it. No. So. Yeah. To be yeah. determined, I guess. <laughs> okay. Nothing Any, else to say. Anything else? That's all I got. Our next item, a commissioner's comments regarding planning and zoning manners. Anybody got any comments on that? Uh, Mario, did you have something specific in mind with this? Uh, uh, no, just it's usually if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask me. We kind of what started that um, in terms of things coming up. I gave you guys this month off, but next month look for uh, the next round of uh, zoning amendment language because there are other <laughs> items that council members brought up that we'd want to address, some of them being, because I just had to deal with it today, um, parking sharing uh, calculations. The idea that if a site services multiple uses right now, they are required to provide the parking for all their uses. And it, do it doesn't make sense uh, for a majority of the time. However, when uh, a use clo one use closes and another use is predominantly later, their uh, applicants have been saying, well, I'm gonna close that business at, at five o'clock so I should be able to use their parking. There are, um, in other communities, uh, specific formulas where you take percentages based on the hours of operation. So that it's not a complete shutdown of their requirement, per se, but it's a, it's a, it's a, a offloading of some of their cap capacity to a use that could use it more as a nighttime use. Sounds so like it'll give us a little more latitude with parking. Yep. Yeah. So that, those kind of things, other other kind of things like that, and um, other residential issues. For example, like the amount of hard service allowed in in some of the homes lately have been uh, excessive in terms of people adding um, an eyebrow turnaround, which is allowed as, as presumably they get a curb cut, but then starting to put in more and more hard surface to suddenly there are eight cars, or not eight, five cars parked in front of a home. And because I technically- I can show you one where you have about 11. <laughs> oh, there you go. I guess I wasn't wrong about eight. No. Um, but uh, technically right now, we don't have any require maximums in terms of hard surface. Uh, all our lot coverage is based totally on structures. So some communities deal with something like that as limiting the amount of hard surface. and. While we do have standards that limit, that specifically say you're not supposed to park in front of the structure of the, the house, you're only supposed to park in the driveway that's leading to the house, to the garage, uh, I think we need the council and others, because and, I have to deal with it in day to day, uh, find ways to strengthen that language to make sure that people's front yards actually have a yard and not a, a full parking lot <laughs> when they, when they have their house. What about behind the house? Behind, behind the house, that's the thing, is usually that's, that's something that could be allowed. A lot of people don't wanna, either don't have the clearance on the side of their build, home to get back there, or they do, but they don't wanna pay that extra, you know, 80 feet or whatever it is of, of asphalt to get into the back and everything. Because then they complain that they wanna keep their backyard for their, their pool and their toys and everything, but, you know, they don't have any qualms about putting their parking in, in front of their neighbors, <laughs> so their neighbors see all their cars. Right. So There's a very small house, not far from me, and they blacktop their entire front yard. Oh, it's not a gigantic front yard because it's not a gigantic house, but they blacktop their entire front yard. There's not a blade of grass there. Oh, gee, yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that's not supposed yeah. to happen. Just examples of some of the things it, we'll be dealing with next it round. It does nothing for the house. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Anybody got anything else? Motion to close? Motion to close. Motion to close. Second, whatever you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> First, second, and third. <laughs> okay, closing the meeting at 7.20. It's reminding us here our next meeting is August 13th and 
Unless the governor has something different in mind, uh, I presume we'll be meeting here. Yep.